Hey there, Chad here, and this is Simple Rockets 2. This is episode two, and in this particular episode, we are going to put a rocket into orbit. In the last episode, I created a company called Flat Earth Global, and it is going to build its second rocket. Okay, so we're gonna start a new rocket, or new craft, and we're gonna make it a rocket. This is the default new rocket that you get. A couple of things about this, I can take pieces off and drag and drop them, but I can't drag and drop the capsule. Uh, that's because there always has to be a capsule in the designer. So I'm gonna add a part. I wanna use a different one. I'm gonna use this guy, put him here. And then you notice I still can't get rid of this. I have to set him as the primary and now it'll allow me to get rid of this. Okay, I don't really like the look of this one. Looks like a beehive or something to me. They say it's insulation. I'm gonna change this. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Now, I want to make something like Sputnik. That's my, my goal here. Sputnik was the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. The Russians launched that. And it was basically a, a ball, and it had a radio transmitter, and it would beep, and you could pick it up on certain radio frequencies. This particular case, I want this to be what ends up flying around, not an entire rocket. So what I'm going to do is make that a stageable section. So I'm going to make an inner stage here. Inner stages are the pieces that separate between stages. So when, when I step, go from one stage to the next, this effectively executes and will split the rocket in this, in this case. This is going to be a three-stage rocket. Two of those stages are going to be engines or fueled so that we can actually launch. Uh, so this was an inner stage. The next thing I'm going to do here is put on a fuel tank. You notice it automatically sizes to what makes sense, and I do like that. In this particular case, I want to widen this out. So we're going to have a rocket that's about that wide, and it'll continue to do that. So big difference between Kerbal Space Program and Simple Rockets is what you're seeing here. I can adjust these parts. This is a fuel tank. Instead of having, you know, 15 different fuel tanks that I can put onto a rocket, I have a fuel tank and there are some specific things I can do with it. I can change its size. I can change the type of fuel it has. Some of these features aren't important right now. Right now we're using a fuel called Kirilox. Um, you'll also notice down here, there's a cost to the rocket I'm building but it points out that money doesn't matter right now because there's no career mode yet. We strictly have a sandbox, so I can build whatever I want uh, without cost being a factor. There are different fuel types. They provide different amounts of thrust. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this one for now, but it's something that I would assume in the career game, you know, different fuels will need to be unlocked or may cost different amounts, and that might be a factor in how you go about designing or building your rocket. Now, in this case, uh, like I said, this is gonna be a three-stage rocket. This will be the final stage. The middle stage is gonna have a mesh engine on it. It's kind of the middle-sized engine. Probably the workhorse is my, my thought. And I'm gonna take advantage of the ability to modify the, the, the size of something. I don't really need it to be this big. Uh, so I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm gonna drop it down. And we're gonna drop it to 50% of its normal size. That's as small as I can take this. Also, there's different power cycles that'll change the amount of delta V that would be in this particular rocket. If I click these, you can see those things change. Um, I'm gonna keep it a gas generator. And I think I wanna keep pretty much everything else there the same. Uh, so maybe I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna different engine nozzle types. I'm gonna go with the bell no, I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna go with Bravo, Bravo configuration on that. And that'll change these numbers just a little bit, nothing, nothing too much. Okay, so this will be stage two, so we wanna do the first stage now. I need to go back and grab another inner stage, and basically just attach that around it. If I can shorten this up a little, I'll save a little bit of weight, that's too much. Let's go right there. And launching into space, weight is extremely important, as you might imagine. 
Okay, this is the main fuel tank, and this is going to be the big one. I'm going to go ahead and make that, uh, let's see, I'm going to make it a little bigger than that. Let's go with, yeah, 11. Let's do 11 meters there. And then finally, the main engine for launch. I'm going to go to engines, and I'm going to pick a Titan engine. Now, if you look at the Titan engine, it's pretty big compared to this rocket. If I snap that on there, it's going to change the size of the, the fuel tank, and I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to select the engine itself, and once again, I'm going to modify its size. I'm going to take it down to, um, let's go with 90%. Also, it's a different type of fuel. I'm going to go ahead and move that over to Kirilox. I think everything else looks pretty good. Maybe go with a bell on this guy more than anything for looks. It's not a huge difference in the, uh, the output. Okay, so there's our rocket. I'm pretty happy with that one. We should have plenty of Delta V to get in to orbit. If you look at documentation for Simple Rockets 2, to get in orbit from Drew into Drew orbit, Drewian orbit, I suppose, uh, a lot of the Delta V maps will say it's 4,000 Delta V. I have to confess, I have not been able to do it for less than about 5,200 Delta V. And that's kind of when I'm looking at it in this position here. This particular rocket is going to start, if, if everything was done at sea level, it's going to have 5,800 meters per second of Delta V. If it was all done in vacuum, 6,600. What the real number is, because I'm moving up through the atmosphere, you know, it, it changes as you go up, it improves with this particular engine. We're probably looking at like right about here as being what the real number for the Delta V would, would really work out to be. I think that should be enough. I, I believe I've gotten into orbit with about 52, 5300 meters per second of Delta V. I have not been able to do better than that. If, if you're able to find a way to get into orbit for 4000, that would be fantastic. That is not something I've done. Good luck and, and I, you're certainly willing or worth a try. A lot of people apparently can do it, just I have not been able to. Okay, so with that said, here's the rocket, and let's take it to the launch pad. And as we wait for that to come up, a few facts about Sputnik. It was launched in October of 1957 by the Russians. They maintained contact with it for about three weeks, uh, at which point the batteries died, I believe, and so they couldn't communicate with it anymore. It weighed about 83 kilograms, which is about 180 pounds, and it was, uh, about two feet in diameter. It was made out of aluminum, very shiny, and scared the heck out of Americans because there was a Soviet item flying over their houses every 96 minutes. And that freaked a lot of people out. I think that might freak them out today too. All right, so let's go ahead and launch. I'm gonna follow a typical launch profile, typical being basically what the tutorial teaches. Um, probably modified just a little for a few things that, that I choose to do. Um, there's no perfect way to do this in my mind. There probably is a perfect way to do it. I don't know what it is. I'm just going to walk through what I do and talk through it as well. So here we go. First, I'm going to throttle all the way up by pressing Z, and then I'm going to launch the stage. As I get to about 500 meters of uh, AGL above ground level, I'm going to pitch over to about 80 degrees. Go ahead and do that now. And then I'm going to throttle back to 80%. Uh, let's go to 75%. So I'm throttling down because with fluid dynamics, the harder you push through a fluid, and the air is a fluid uh, in, for, for these purposes, the more resistance you get. So the more force you apply, the more resistance there is. So applying less force or less thrust will decrease that resistance some. It allows us to use less fuel to get through the thicker part of the atmosphere. At 5,000 meters, I pitched over to about 45 degrees. And then when I get to 15,000 meters, I'm gonna throttle back up to full speed. Now, one of the things I'm gonna watch is apoapsis. The um, orbital altitude to be out of the atmosphere is, uh, I'm not exactly sure, it's somewhere between 60 and 70 kilometers. Um, so there's the 15,000 throttle back up. I want to try to aim for about 80 to 90 kilometers for my orbit. So that's where I want this to kind of peak. As I get to 50, I'm going to pitch this way down to 
and I want this to slow down. I want to use this fuel to get a lot of lateral uh, speed, a lot of lateral velocity. The lateral velocity is important because that is what uh, allows you to orbit. Basically, an orbit means you're falling back to the planet, but you're moving so quickly that you're you're missing it. Is is the idea? We're separating. That was our first stage, and I did it again. I had meant to wait until daylight so you could see this a little better. So it's not going to be the best video ever, but I think we'll be okay. So that stage is falling away. We are still in atmosphere. There's a little bit of sound, and there's a little bit of air density. I'm going to go ahead and start the next stage. It's still throttled to 100%, so it will start the engine, but then I'm going to kill the engine immediately. And then here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to go to the map view. Now, this is one thing I like about simple rockets over Kerbal, is you can pause and manipulate your maneuver nodes. For me, that seems to make some sense. I, I feel like, uh, you know, I would have somebody who had pre-planned every little aspect of a mission, they would know how all this was going to play out at this point. And as a game, having to try to do some of this stuff real time feels a little tedious to me. So I'm very happy that I can pause this. By the way, this is the gizmo. And as I drag these, it'll change certain things. And I'll talk about this for just a moment. Uh, this changes how fast those change. So when I want to make big changes, you slide it to 100. When you want to make small changes, I slide it way down so I get very precise. Okay, so the gizmo basically tells us how we want to adjust our uh, our navigation at the next node. The node is, I clicked to place it, and then it brings up the gizmo, and then I can basically adjust what I want to happen. This is forward thrust, basically. It's prograde, and that's what I want to do. I want to go faster until I'm going fast enough that I never hit the planet anymore. So right here, where I'm doing this, adding this much... It, it, it basically completed this orbit. I added forward velocity. The orbit is a little lopsided. On its uh, close side, it's going to be at 81 kilometers. And on the far side, it's going to be at, 80, at 92 kilometers. So I'm going to change that a little bit with these. And this is where I want to turn this way, way, way down. So I want to change this so it's as close to dead center on that node as I possibly can. It's right about there. And then I can kind of fine tune this a little bit. So if I'm at 91 here, I want to make this 91 as well. And that'll give me a circular orbit, 91.7. It's not going to be perfect. There is a little bit of error that will occur. Uh, no matter how well I do this, there's always going to be just a hint of, of it being off just a hair. Uh, but I want to get it as close as I can comfortably without wasting a lot of time what it really comes down to. So that's within 100 meters of circular. I'm going to be okay with that. When it executes, and I'm going to show you how that works here in a second, uh, it won't execute perfectly. And that's okay. It'll be close enough that, that these numbers will, will work for us. And we'll see how that plays out here in a minute. Uh, clicking this will kill that node that I just built. I don't want to do that. Uh, if I wanted to move around, what I could do is click these to, to move off of it. This is the planned burns, this guy right here that I just set up. This tells me a little bit about it. It will The, the, the node itself, I will reach that point in 1.8 minutes. The maneuver that I've created is going to use 1200 delta V, and the burn time is about 70 seconds. Now, I happen to know that that'll be okay, because I think there's like a minute and a half of fuel on this guy. We come out here we can see that there's 1.7 minutes of fuel so we're in, we're in good shape about a minute 40 uh, in fuel the I'm going to put this back to kind of a normal number the the burn time in that uh, basically you take how long it needs to burn you take half that time and you subtract it from the arrival time and that's when you start the burn that can be complicated if you're not used to doing it here's the good news simple rockets has a lot of this stuff automated. What I can do is click this guy right here, and that'll turn it on. And the rocket will, uh, the, the system will fire the engine on time on its own for me. So it's called an auto burn, and I'm going to go ahead and use that feature. I can also fast forward to the time when that's going to occur, and I'm going to do that. 
as well. And I guess I'm close enough to it now that it is not allowing me to do that. It's not picking up the speed at all. A lot of times it'll go to four times speed if it's if it's out there a little bit. There we go. Actually, that was my bad. I had not hit these in the right order. Sometimes this lights up and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why it does it and when. Nonetheless, it is now auto firing and it will fire for the next minute. In the interest of full disclosure, I might fast forward through that so you don't have to sit here and watch that, but we can look at it over here on this screen. We'll actually see what's happening a little bit. This is our current expected trajectory, but of course we're adding thrust so it's changing and it will continue to change and the, the goal is it will basically match our projected orbit. In a perfect world, it would end up with these numbers, I, you know, exactly where they're going to be. What I would expect is this is going to probably slide around to here somewhere, and this will slide around to here, and we'll be off just a little bit. Burn is almost over. There it is. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's a 13 kilometer difference. That's, that's kind of sizable, but it's, it's not the worst ever. Now, if I chose to, and I guess I will, just for the sake of doing it, we can clean that up a little. We'll put another node in here, and we'll adjust that. Uh, let's slow that down. We'll adjust it with this guy. Put him right there. 93 and 90, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and expand that a little bit. There we go. 93.7, 93.7, that wouldn't be so bad. I'll arrive at that node in 61 seconds, and that's a 17 meter per second delta V. That's an extremely short burst of the engine. You'll notice this is lit up now. That's good. That's what I want. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward it, and it'll do that burn for just a moment. You'll see this bar fly across here, and it is done. Now, how close did we really get? It went a little too long, but not bad at all. We have a fairly circular orbit at this point. Okay, so last thing we're going to do here, and maybe I think we're going to wait until we're in the sun so you can see this. So I'm going to fast forward and increase the speed. Maybe a little more. There we go. Okay, whoa, well, stop. There we go. We're back at normal speed. So this is my rocket. Now I st should still have some control over this. There's some battery. Uh, I think it has the ability to maneuver a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's good. So we can set this wherever we want. I think we're moving. I'm a little confused now with where we're at. Oh, that's still east. Yeah, so that's east that way. Um, I'm going to do the final stage here and what we'll see. Now, I do still have fuel. There's actually quite a bit of fuel left. There's still almost 2,000 meters per second. So I could have gotten away with quite a bit less fuel. I might retry this and see what that looks like. Maybe I'll post something on that if I do. Um, talk about the nav ball in the future, but what I want to do right now is do this final separation. So I have one more stage I can fire, stage four, and what it's telling me here is that it's an inner stage. So it's not launching an engine or something. Actually, there's two things going. It, it's going to separate here, and then you know this is going to do its thing, which I don't think it's going to do anything, actually, but here we go. Firing that stage, and there is our separated satellite. Now, a couple of things here. I can click on this guy. I can tell it to target him, and I can blow him up, and he'll be gone. And then it immediately, automatically went back to the the uh, Sputnik here, which I did not rename, so it's just going to have a name of new. I probably should have saved it over here. I did not do that. That was my bad. Nonetheless, we will real name this. Uh, I'm not going to use Sputnik. I think I'll rename it Spheronik. We'll go back out of the system and rename it Spheronik. Spheronik 1. But that is the mission. We are now in a stable orbit around the planet of Drew. And I hope you learned something. Uh, actually, one last thing. You should recall that these were identical. It was 93.7, 93.7. Go back and watch it. I think we'll see that. The kicking of the inner stage made that much difference. It increased, it, it increased this by 
seven kilometers. That would be the, I need to get rid of this, sorry about that. It increased the apoapsis by seven kilometers by doing that. So the, the farthest part of the orbit was increased from, from kicking that off of there. If you're very close to entering atmosphere and you do something like that, you could accidentally end up dragging yourself into the atmosphere. Is that something to pay attention to? Okay, well, this has been a long episode. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you picked something up. We will have another episode uh, on Simple Rockets in the near future. We'll try to do something else that's interesting, maybe do a manned mission uh, that also returns back to the planet and uses parachutes to splash down. That might be uh, a fun one to do. But until then, I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe if you will. And beyond that, fair travels.